Okay, so uh, basically you guys didn't see the last viewing party, but that was where I got my uh, ass kicked by Ramsey. And, uh, you know, I tried to give him the best fight that I could, but, you know, with the, the whole game plan with Ramsey was stuff the shot and the takedown, and I didn't think he'd be striking on me. And then he came out striking, threw a uh, overhand right, caught me, dazed me, and then uh, Ramsey went there for the, uh, the TKO finish. Um... I talked to Marty afterwards, I talked to uh, Eric, and they said, hey man, you're really close to uh, winning that fight, it was kind of neck and neck, um, but you just got caught, and then hopefully you can learn from this, so made at least the semifinals, and uh, you know, that was a lot farther than I think a lot of people thought I would make it. Um, talked to Ramsey after the fight, and uh, Ramsey came up to me, he's like, hey man, that was... That was one of the funnest fights that I've ever uh, been involved in, and I want to, you know, say thanks and everything else. And I told him thanks. And I was, just, I was still kind of frustrated because I lost the fight, but at the same time, it was definitely a, a huge uh, learning experience for me. So it was good, and I was happy with my performance on the show. And I, I went, you know, pretty far, a lot farther than I think a lot of people thought I would. Um, next fight was the uh, grudge match between uh, Tony Ferguson and Chuck O'Neill, and uh, you know, Chuck. He fought basically four times in about five weeks, and that's very hard for somebody to do, having to, you know, cut that weight, make that weight, and to put themselves through that grind. And um, Tony, if you take a look at all his fights, he got knockout victories, um, you know, in the first round, and he basically, um, he took three rounds to go through Chuck, you know, and Chuck, Chuck's a trooper, man. He's a tough ass, tough ass guy, and he took a lot of shots from Tony, and he kept coming, he kept coming, and then finally, you know, Tony got the best of him, and he went for the TKO finish. Um, I don't know if the fight would have been different if Chuck didn't have to cut weight um, and fight, you know, four times in uh, four weeks, but it was definitely a great fight, and that basically puts um, Tony and uh, Ramsey um, in the, uh, the finale. Uh, the reason I wasn't at the viewing party for the uh, Ramsey fight was because um, two weeks after I got off the show, um, Joe Silva, matchmaker for the UFC, called me up. He said, uh, Chris, I've got good news for you. I said, what's that? He's like, you're going to be fighting your buddy, your close friend, Chuck O'Neill. And I said, oh. And, I, you know, I was kind of like, this is kind of hard because I knew I was going to have to fight a friend. And he said, i got even better news for you. It's going to be on... Uh, it's going to be live, it's going to be on the main card, it's going to be the first televised fight of the uh, Ultimate Fighter finale. So I was like, okay. And then basically it was kind of ironic because uh, me, Chuck O'Neill, Charlie Rader, and uh, Clay Harvison were supposed to meet up in New Orleans to hang out um, a week basically after that phone call was supposed to happen. But evidently this wasn't going to happen now because, you know, now me and Chuck are fighting. So I sent Chuck a message, text message. I said, hey, bro, um, I just got a call from Joe Silva. And you'll never guess who I'm fighting. And he texted me back. He's like, I know. Let's just make it. Let's just make sure that's a good fight and, uh, you know, give the fans what they want. So, you know, communication basically ceased. And uh, I started training for Chuck. Chuck started training for me. And, uh, yeah, so the whole time that I got off the show, the show wrapped on March 3rd, and I basically trained all the way up until June 4th um, to, you know, to, to fight Chuck and hopefully get the victory. Um, so if you guys saw the finale, you saw exactly what the outcome was of the fights. Um, Clay Harvison fought Justin Edwards. It was a great fight. Um, Clay took it, split decision, and my hat's off to Clay because I really, I thought that was a fight that Justin was going to win, but Clay um, was smart. He went to Ramsey's. He knew that his weakness was wrestling. He went to Ramsey's camp um, in Utah, trained with those guys for six weeks, um, worked a lot of get-ups, wrestling defense, and he was able to pull off the uh, split decision win against Justin. The other fight was uh, my good friend Shamar Bailey fought... Um, my other Canadian friend, um, and it was it was definitely it was they, they had the same dynamic that me and you know Ryan and Shamar had the same dynamic that me and Chuck had because they're on the same team, they slept in the same room, but business is business, and that fight basically was just Shamar taking Ryan down over and over again, and he grinded out the decision. Um, next up was me and Chuck. Um, a lot of people were surprised about this fight because 
Uh, Chuck was a two to one favored um, to, to, to win. Um, I was supposed to, I guess, a lot of people thought I'd lose a fight. That's nothing new because throughout this whole series and season, um, people have underestimated, they doubted me, and they felt that I was going to lose fights. And after seeing Chuck's performance on the show and Dana White was completely behind him on how he fought, um, a lot of people thought, you know, hey, Chuck O'Neill's going to um, take it to Chris Cope. Um, but you know what? With the crew that I had, with Jeff Clark, with Pat Spate, my striking coach Charles Martinez, my strength and conditioning coach Tom Hill, um, various guys throughout the San Diego, and then all my fighter uh, training partners and fighters here at the arena. I had a solid camp, maybe one of the best camps I've had, and I was really pushed to the utmost to uh, to basically be the best that I can be. And um, you know, now that I'm sober, now I'm a recovering alcoholic. You know, I don't really party anymore. So, thing is, as soon as I got off the show. There's really no more nightlife. I, I didn't really have time to really soak it all in because I just went right back to I just went right to training, and I worked very hard. Um, it might have been one of the hardest training camps I've I've ever been through. I pushed myself through, and it really took me um, to another level. And the other thing I did was I I did a little psychological tactic because everyone that got off the show they're using Twitter a lot and Facebook a lot. And they basically were, you know, sending a lot of messages saying, you know, just did five MMA rounds and just did mitts with so-and-so. And I was Twittering stuff like basically, you know, just went to Denny's, got a grand slam, uh, passed out on the beach. Like, I wasn't talking about training at all. I didn't want anyone to think I didn't, didn't know I was training as hard as I was. So I guess you could say I, was, I wanted to make it look like I was sandbagging and I wasn't doing anything. But when the fight came um, with Chuck, the weight cut went good. Um, I made 70 easily. And then, you know, me and Chuck squared off. It was kind of a surreal experience because, you know, Joe Rogan calls us up on stage. Dana White standing in between the, both of us. You know, it was the biggest, it was the biggest audience I've ever seen for a weigh-in. And uh, it, it was cool. You know, and it, was great, it was good to get food back in my system and, and, you know, when me and Chuck squared off, we just said, hey, let's just make it be a good fight. We both smiled, and we, we knew, you know, it was showtime. Um, There's a lot of nerves going into this fight. I have nerves before every fight, and that's basically just, you know, it's just the way that I operate. It's just the way that I think every fighter goes, every fighter kind of goes through it. You know, it's just one of the hardest parts for me is waiting, waiting to fight. And uh, just because you want to do it right then and there and get it out of the way, but you just have to wait to perform and everything else and when fight day came you know we were doing the warm-ups I got the food in my system um, I was ready to go and I still had some nerves going through me I still remember warming up and I still remember feeling a little flat and my manager and coach Jeff Clark said right before I went out he said to me Chris I just want you to know one thing that you've basically trained harder than most people that I've seen. You've had one of the best camps that I've really ever put on for anybody. And I want you to know, win, lose, or draw, I'm proud of you. And you know, uh, my striking coach Charles Martinez agreed, and my strength, you know, and then um, you know my other coach Pat Spade agreed too. And we all kind of gave ourselves a hug, you know, in the locker room. And it was like this huge weight just came off my shoulders. And I was like, you know what? Whether I go out there and I win or lose, these guys got my back and these guys support me and everything else. And, you know, if anyone knows anything about the UFC, you know, Bert is the main guy that uh, tells you when it's time to go to the cage. And you'll hear this big, you'll, you'll basically just hear him yell going, let's roll. And when he says that, it's game time. So we basically got up and walked through out a bunch of hallways. Um, my music came on and there's, you know, the cameras came out of nowhere. You know, I look around the, the palms and I see a bunch of people that were saying my name and stuff. And it's kind of a surreal experience. And just like I fought in, you know, when I fought in Strike Force, I was like, you know what? This is my time. This is my time to have some fun. This is my dream. It's time to go out there and it's time to, you know, have some good, to have, to have some fun. And, uh, you know, the music came on, went to the cage. Um, then Chuck's music came on. He came across the cage, I was looking at him, he was looking at me, and then uh, Bruce Buffer's in the middle, and uh, it's kind of surreal, because I'm like, you know, I'm fighting in the UFC, Bruce Buffer's the announcer, and and then I just, I just, 
I was like, screw it. I'm just going to have as much fun as I can. And for those three rounds, I just, you know, I had fun and I, I was able to pull off the, uh, the uh, you know, the decision on Chuck. But what a lot of people don't realize that in that kick, you know, I threw a lot of my arsenal, a lot of my striking arsenal, a lot of stuff that I developed over three months that I wasn't really able to um, throw on the show because with each one of my fights, Brock was very adamant, you know, don't throw that many kicks, don't throw that many head kicks, everything else, because we don't want you getting taken down. And that with, you know, with, Ch with Chuck, we knew that he was basically jiu-jitsu and striking and wrestling wasn't one of his biggest strengths, so I was able to throw a lot more in my arsenal. Um, but, you know, getting that decision win, having getting interviewed by Joe Rogan, you know, being on TV, it was just kind of a surreal experience, and it was very well deserved, I, in my opinion, because I proved a lot to a lot of people throughout that show on um, people that thought that, you know, I wouldn't basically go as far as I did, and I ended up being this guy that they thought that Lou Pauly described me as someone that you could just walk through like it was no big deal. And then all of a sudden, you know, I make it to the semifinals. And when you look at it, I basically finished third for the season 13 of the Ultimate Fighter. You know, uh, Tony took first, uh, Ramsey took second. Then me and Chuck were fighting for third. I won, so I took third. And then I just remember kind of going back to the locker room, sitting down, going, hey, I just fought in the UFC and I got my first UFC victory. And, um, you know, Chuck came in the locker room afterwards. He's like, hey, man, I just want to wait tell you congratulations great fight you know you did great and I said to him I said hey man uh, I appreciate that he's like you know you got a lot better I'm, and I told him I'm like Chuck what do you think I did do you think I basically just got off the show and didn't do anything he's like no I, I, I knew that at least if I, I made it to the semis I had a very high probability that I'd be fighting in the finale so I took two days off and I went right back to training and uh, you know honed my craft and everything else and uh, he said, well, hey, man, I just want you to know that you, you, you performed great out there tonight. And, uh, you know, I shook his hand. I think I might have given him a hug. And uh, I said, thanks a lot, Chuck. You know, thanks for the opportunity and everything else. And, you know, I really meant what I said in the, to Joe Rogan was, uh, you know, me and Chuck were friends before. We were friends during and we're going to be friends after. And that's just kind of you know, how it is, and uh, I t I've still talked talk to Chuck uh, via text back and forth, and I'm, I'm hoping to go out to Boston, get some training with them, with them and, uh, you know, see what they, they got going on in Boston, and uh, it felt good, man, it felt good, because, like I also said to Joe Rogan, you know, growing up, I had a lot of people that, you know, doubted me on my capabilities and everything else, um, and there's a certain part of my life where I did listen to it, but you know, I stopped listening to it, and I just knew that if I believed in myself, you know, I worked hard, I surrounded myself with positive people and positive energy, and people that knew how to get me where I needed to go, that, you know, I'd be able to produce it, and, you know, that's what I've done, and that if I can do it, you know, anybody can do it, you just gotta, you just gotta follow that and believe in it, um, but, yeah, now, I'm the ultimate fighter, season 13 is basically officially wrapped, and yeah, Tony took out Ramsey, um, a knockout victory um, and Tony I talked to Tony after the fight and you know there's that big line with Spider-Man where it's uh, you know with great great power comes great responsibility and I, I told I told Tony that I said hey man you know you got a lot of people gonna be looking up to you now you know don't mess this up and let's let's make sure that you uh, represent this the most you can and uh, I had a grudge kind of against Tony you know after we left the show but I don't have a grudge against him anymore because when his speech, his speech that he said to Joe Rogan made sense, you know. I mean, he had, he's, I think he's the only person that's ever won the Ultimate Fighter and people were booing him. And he told Joe Rogan, he's like, hey man, I got, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a good role model to these kids. I'm going to try to represent uh, to the most that I can. And we'll see if Tony does it. But I, I felt that after talking to him, I felt that he actually uh, wants to make a difference and that he's going to try to be the best role model that he can but time will tell to see if Tony actually does it or not um, but he uh, Tony I, my hats off to him man he had four fights for the ultimate fighter season 13 they all ended in either TKOs or knockouts and uh, he, he won it rightfully uh, Ramsey my hats off to him too because Ramsey went in there he fought hard um, but he just got caught like three other people got caught with Tony you know it's just that's just how good Tony is. Um, but yeah, so now the, it's been wrapped, and 
uh, people keep congratulating me and I keep saying, hey, thank you, it's well deserved and I appreciate it. Um, but, you know, I have to realize, you know, I've got a huge target on my back. Um, I've got a name now. You know, I'm in the UFC. I was on the show. So there's definitely guys that are up and coming that they're going to want to fight me. They're going to want to take me out. And I'm going to have to be ready for it. So the training camp that I had for this fight, the next one is going to have to be that much harder. And the one after that is going to be that, that much harder. I'm just going to have to constantly learn. I'm going to constantly have to work hard. And I'm going to constantly just have to surround myself around positive people. And people that can give me that next step that, you know, that, that can push me. And more than anything, I'm just going to have to keep believing. Because it was that belief that I had in myself that, was allow that allowed me to make it as far as I did on the show. And if I want to make it somewhere in the UFC, if I want, really want to do something with this, I'm going to have to keep that belief alive. Um, so, yeah. The, this, uh, hope hopefully, we'll be able to do some more of these... Uh, video blogs, you know, in the future to come, but I want to thank um, cast and crew, especially David with uh, T Video Tours, who basically have done all these videos for me, and they've allowed me to uh, really extend out to you guys, so you guys can check them out, and uh, I'd like to thank all my training partners, you know, at the arena, and then my uh, my coaches, once again, you know, Pat Spate, um, Charles Martinez, my striking coach, Tom Hill, strength and conditioning, and, um, you know, I'd also like to thank, you know, my coach and manager, Jeff Clark, who really put on a uh, great camp for me. And these guys really pushed me and got me to the next level to be able to win this fight. And all my training partners throughout San Diego and especially here at the arena, without you guys, I wouldn't, excuse me, I wouldn't be able to accomplish, you know, most of the stuff that I've been able to accomplish thus far and the stuff that hopefully I'll be able to accomplish in the future. All right, I'm out.